what only you can do, Lord. Thank you for another day. You have made another way for us, oh God. You are the mountain mover. Oh yes. You raise the dead and you make the barren to be fruitful, Lord. You are Yahweh. You are El Shaddai. Come again and do what only you can do. of Judah. We bow down and we worship you, Jesus. You are Yahweh. Hallelujah, Lord. Come and do what only you can do. What only you can do, Lord. Yahweh, Yahweh. Thank you, Lord. Yahweh, El Shaddai. Yahweh, we give you praise. Yahweh, oh, yes. Yahweh, yeah. Come and do what only you can do. Nobody can do the things you do. We give you praise. We bless your name, Lord. Come and do what only you can do. Call him Yahweh. Yahweh. We worship you, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. Father God, we give you praise this morning. We thank you for another day you have given unto us. We have reason to call upon your name. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for every day you give to us, Lord. We say, blessed be your holy name in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We give God praise for blessing us with yet another day. Today is Wednesday, the 28th day in the month of December. When God gives you a day, you have to leave. Yes. If he takes the days away, you know, some people perish this year. And there are still some people that will not cross over to next year, unfortunately. But if the Lord gives you any day, you are expected to rejoice and be glad in it. You are also expected to fulfill 
the things that God expects of you. We thank God for the day he has given to us. We are wrapping up the days remaining in this year. And we are very careful to look at the details. You know one thing? To be given the privilege to live, to be alive, is a responsibility. And that is why it becomes very disturbing for somebody who has been given the responsibility, the privilege to be alive. And they take it for granted. We have mentioned great men that have died that came to the point of their death only for them to realize that they were really given an opportunity to be alive and they didn't even understand it. My prayer for you that is hearing us today is that you understand that the life given to you is a responsibility that you will give account of. We are looking at tidying up the remaining days left for us in this year and getting ready to step into next year equipped and empowered to maximize what the Lord has provided for us in the coming year. Knowing that the days we have been choosing to live are evil days. We are not ignorant of the fact that the pressure for compromise is increasing every day. And we are asking the Lord for grace and strength to enable us to keep on shining our light in the midst of darkness. It becomes very difficult. When we can't see the need for us to shine our light. There are so many places where the people of God has made mistakes. We are trusting God that we can look into this, correct it, receive mercy and forgiveness, and then embrace this opportunity to be alive on earth and maximize it. That's my prayer for you, that you maximize the days of your life. So that when the time comes for you to depart, you can look at their life and said i have lived well i am an overcomer jesus said he that overcometh shall inherit all things but there are people that are allowing what they are seeing on earth to overcome them i pray that that will not be your portion we have been looking at kinds of prayers we've been dealing with taking us a long long time dealing with this prayer issue and we are trusting god we're going to wrap it up as this year wraps up and then by the time we step into next year we'll be ready to dive into the things that god has for us we have touched so many we have about 24 kinds of prayer and i can assure you that it is not an exhaustive list from the word of god we can see different kinds of prayer so we listed up 24 different kinds of prayer and we have been handling them. Today, we continue. It's just remaining few to finish. So you can look back at what we have done. We, it's there on YouTube, it's there on Facebook. You can look at it and see for yourself the details of what we have done so far. Today, we are going to continue. And the topic we are looking at today is the kind of prayer. There's a prayer called the prayer of faith. And there is a prayer called persistent prayer. These two we are going to look at today. The prayer of faith. And then persistent prayer. These two different kinds of prayers are seen, displayed, in two different kinds of situations. I want to read the book of Luke. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 18. I'll read verse number 1 to 5. The Bible says, Also Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not to turn coward. Hey, when you stop praying, look at what it says. Always to pray and not to turn coward. Faint, lose heart, or give up. Verse 2. We are reading Luke 18. 
He said in a certain city there was a judge who neither reverent and feared God or respected or considered man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him. Note, kept coming to him and saying, Protect and defend and give me justice against my adversary. And for a time he could not. But later he said to himself, Though I have neither reverence nor fear of, for God or respect or consideration for man, yet because this widow continues to bother me, hey, that is the kind of prayer we are talking about, that you can call as a bother. He said, yet this widow, because she continues to bother me, I will defend her and protect and avenge her. Least she give me intolerable annoyance and wear me out by her continual coming. That is the kind of prayer we are talking about. The kind of prayer that is almost annoying, intolerable, that wears out continual coming at least. He said, or oh, at the last she come and rail on me or assault me or strangle me. <laughs> Verse 7 says, and will not, okay, look at this. And will not our just God defend and protect and avenge his elect, his chosen ones, who cry to him day and night? Will he defer them and delay help on their behalf? I tell you, he will defend and protect and avenge them speedily. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find persistent in faith on earth? Persistent prayer. That is a beautiful description. Jesus himself described it. In the book of Isaiah, we also see another place where God is actually encouraging this kind of prayer. He said, you that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent and give him no rest till he establish. That is persistent prayer. And I want to say something concerning this persistent prayer because you see some people praying persistently over things and it is not answered because the conditions about persistency needs to be considered. There are two major conditions of this persistent prayer I want to really point out. Number one, the person that engages in this kind of prayer is someone that is part of the body of Christ. You have to be a child of God to pray this kind of prayer. Of course, there are some prayers that God answers even unbelievers. Yes, he answers prayers. Sometimes they don't even pray, but God sees the danger because we are all his creation. He intervenes even when nobody has asked for it. But for this kind of prayer, Look at what the unjust just said. I don't fear God. I don't respect man. But the persistency of this woman is wearing me out. Let me just settle her. Now Jesus pointed this thing out. He said, will God not avenge his own elect? So you have to be an elect of God. This is a prayer that is exclusively for a child of God that has a confidence with God that can boldly come before the Lord and plead for a situation. That is the number one condition about this kind of prayer. You can pray this prayer as an unbeliever. You have no ground. Unbelievers can cry out in danger. People have been, you know, involved in accidents that unbelievers and they are crying out, Oh Lord, help! And they saw a miraculous deliverance. That is not persistent prayer. The persistent prayer is meant for a child of God and is a situation that is demanding and is a privilege reserved mainly for the people that are in the Lord. The second condition about a persistent prayer is that you will be sure is a prayer that is according to the will of God. 
If you are praying persistent prayer and it's a prayer that is out of line, it's a prayer that is not according to the will of God, you, you, no matter how you pray. You know, I've mentioned here in this place about a man that prayed and fasted and died. He was a pastor. He happened to be a medical Practitioner. Yes, he was a medical doctor, a pastor. He was waiting on the Lord for a particular thing and was insisting that that situation changed. He was fasting and praying. He died in the course of that. Complications came and he died. As in a situation where you are insisting is a kind of persistent kind of prayer. There are prayers that God is not meant to answer. No matter how persistent, you know, that is where some people said, I prayed and prayed and prayed over the issue. Why am I not getting the answer? Now the year is coming to an end. You should be able to understand the conditions of persistent prayer in case in your life there are things you are insisting that should end, that should change. You should understand this, at least these two major conditions of persistent prayer god can answer in fact he encourages us jesus began to say it in this luke chapter 18 verse 1 that men ought always to pray and not to give up he made mention of the persistency of this widow now we saw as i quoted in the book of uh, isaiah where god was encouraging his people he said you that are calling upon the lord you that are engaging in prayer you better don't stop praying he said pray in insist make demand he said you that call upon my name do not keep quiet do not keep silent keep on emphasizing it keep on making demand cry as pay not he said and make demand until i establish what i said i'm gonna do that is god encouraging you in persistence to prayer if you want to look that place up it's found in the book of isaiah chapter 62 you see where god is saying you that make mention of the lord keep not silent give him no rest until he establish until he establish what he has promised so persistent prayer is always encouraged but it is within the confines of the will of god here we see this widow insisting that justice be given to her from those that are oppressing her she kept on making demand i believe that this woman will come to the house of this judge wait for him at the gate maybe knocking at the door maybe screaming and shouting the man could not rest well i believe because if that woman was taking it gently the man would just maybe he will be driving past and the woman would just be there she'll be screaming avenge me of my adversary i believe the man must have driven and gone to the office and this woman may have you know come to the office there waiting there screaming and crying because the man said this woman she will wear me out that is the nature of this kind of prayer. When you insist, Lord, your word said that this situation is not supposed to be seen in my life as a child of God. And I am insisting, Lord, that this situation changes. The Lord encourages us that even if you have prayed this kind of prayer and prayed it again, and it looks as if the change has not come, and you know it is within the confines of what God has promised you, he said you should continue it takes faith for you to continue this kind of prayer there are people that pray this prayer they came to a point they gave up jesus said you should not give up you should not throw in the towel so far you are a child of god you are not an unbeliever god answers even unbelievers sometimes out of his mercy but as a child of god who is insisting on a situation that must change a condition that is not palatable and you know that it is the will of god what do i mean by the will of god the bible says when we pray our mess we don't receive the answers to prayer like somebody that was insisting i heard about a lady that was praying that a particular man marry her and this man is happily married with the wife and children and she was praying brutally making demand that the man will marry her and there was somebody that was like excuse me this kind of prayer you're praying what he said what if the woman dies i'm talking about some kind of things that people you know what that is a major prayer that is praying a mess no matter how much you pray for that prayer pray in that kind of direction you're not going to receive the answers to prayer i tell you 
You pray according to the will of God. Pray, I'm a child of God. Yes, I'm still single. Your word said, Lord, none shall lack a mate. I don't know what is keeping me. Maybe a curse, maybe a foundational error. Whatever it is, Lord, I insist you make demand on the word of God. And what do you see? Answers to prayer. God encourages us to continue in this kind of prayer. And I want to really trust the Lord in your life. You should be able to see the need to find out what God is expecting of you. He watches you closely and wants to be sure. He said if that unjust judge can be worried by this woman, do you think he will just leave you and you keep praying that kind of prayer. He said he will answer speedily. You may have prayed this kind of prayer, trusting God for something for a long time. I will assure you one thing. As you continue praying and trusting God with thanksgiving and faith in your heart, God said he will answer speedily. When that answer comes, child of God, it's going to come with speed. It's going to come with excitement. It's going to come with jubilation. It's going to come. Hallelujah. Trust the Lord. He said he looks for faith. When he will come on earth, will he find faith? Let your faith remain. Some people have given up on God because they have prayed this kind of prayer. They feel as if it's not coming. Hold on. You will see a speedy answer. I go to the second kind of prayer we have today. And this one is the prayer of faith. Wow. Others are also prayed by faith. Like we just read here. Jesus said in verse 8 of this Luke 18. When the Son of Man come on earth, will he find faith on earth? Every prayer is prayed by faith. But this one is specially called the prayer of faith. I didn't call it that. The word of God called it that. And I want to read it now in the book of James chapter 5, verse 15 says, And the prayer of faith will restore the one who is sick. I want to start from 14, and then I read 15. The Bible says, Is anyone among you sick? He must call for the elders, the spiritual leaders of the church, and they are to pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. I love that. Wow. Sick. He should call for the elders, the leaders. Mm. The pastors, yes. The Bible says, and they are to pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. That is God's own remedy. In case someone fell sick, we are blessed with health. We are supposed to live in health. But in case something happens and you find yourself sick, the Bible gave you the remedy. Call for the elders. Call for your pastors. Call for them. They are spiritual leaders. The Bible says they will pray over you, anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord. Now look at what 15 says. And the prayer of faith, that is the prayer prayed over the sick no matter the sickness whether terminal whether internal whether hereditary whether whatever he said the prayer of faith will restore the one who is sick and the lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven beautiful double package for one prayer he will be anointed, prayed for, and he shall be healed. And in case he has committed sin, sometimes so many sicknesses we are released because the doors we are opened for infirmity through some sins that people commit. This one is clear. Remember Jesus, after healing that one man that was 38 years old in sickness, Jesus met him on the temple and told him, he said, behold, listen, you have been made whole. Do not go back to the sins. Least a worse thing will come upon you. You can see that sins can open up doors. We're going to pray for the sick this morning. Yes. Whatever be the sickness. The Bible says the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. And in case there is a sin involved, not every sin, not every sickness 
has to do with sin. I remember the disciples were asking Jesus and said, this man was born blind. Who committed the sin? Unlike the man that was 38 years old in sickness, Jesus warned him, he said, do not go back to sin. If you go back to sin, a worse and more terrible sickness will come upon you for that. But for the man that was born blind, grew up a full-fledged man, still blind, Jesus said it is not the sin of his father or, his mother, or the mother that he was born blind. The weakness of the sin of the entire race, human race, is that consequence. So all of us, anything happens if you're not in Christ. Now, as for this kind of prayer, called the prayer of faith, is exclusively for the sick. The Bible says anointing oil, be part over him, prayed over him, and that simple prayer of faith will heal the sick. The Bible says that God will raise him up. Hallelujah! I'm not talking about medications here. We don't deny the fact that medications are there and they are helping so much. Thank God for the discoveries of the drugs and the things that is helping to keep men in health. In this kind of prayer, it is not denied. Yet we see God assuring you the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. As simple as that. Because God is the God of all flesh. He that created you, he can renew you, he can refresh you, he can create even brand new organs. There is this testimony of a, of a woman that has some issues with her womb and the womb was removed in surgery. There is no way this woman can get pregnant and she needed to have a baby. Do you know a creative miracle happened and this woman was pregnant and it was, it was, it was, a, you know, medically it's not possible. The same doctor that, co that conducted the surgery was like, how come this woman was pregnant? Where is the baby growing in this woman? There needed to be a womb for the baby to be nurturing and growing. Do you know when the time came, it became a situation where she needed to be operated upon and come and see the amazing created miracle that God did a recorded medical miracle in the life of this woman when she was opened up for the baby to be removed they saw this baby in a something that looks like a couch videoed it was there how did it happen God can create something is whatever it is in your body that baby a miracle baby we are medical things have said it's impossible the baby was brought out in something that looked like a couch there was no womb it was medically removed for the health of this woman yet we saw the almighty at work the almighty God says when we render the prayer of faith he will heal the sick and raise him up when you are sick you are down you are lying down always lying down always walking if you need to walk you walk gently but most times you are attended to you can't do what you used to do the Lord said he will heal you he will raise you up and right now we want to offer this prayer of faith if you have any anointed oil around you you can bring it out right now it is a prayer of faith you need to believe it wherever you are in case you don't have any oil there you don't have anointing oil whatever oil you have there can be used and in case there is no oil around you you can leave hold on the water we are going to use it as a point of contact whatever it is you are trusting God for tell you that the word of God is will locate you wherever you are right now as we pray this prayer of faith now listen to me it doesn't matter what it is whatever I mean whatever menstrual, menstrual pain that is a periodic thing oh my god yes somebody the Lord is gonna heal you of that somebody that is a man and it is a very difficult situation for you right now get ready because this prayer of faith is going to release you from that perpetual pain somebody arthritis you don't know it has been there you have tried all manner of things but the persistence of that sickness has been there get ready this prayer of faith is going to relieve you I want to hear testimonies because I can see that the Lord is ready to release healings everywhere no matter where you are hearing us we 
are about to release this prayer of faith get an anointing oil around you right now if there is no anointing oil look for you don't know where you are if you have any water around you you're gonna use that water as a point of contact when it's time for you to anoint yourself anywhere you are you place that oil and place it on you and if there is a way you can touch the contact of wherever that illness is in case it's a terminal in illness you can just drink that water as we have finished speaking the word of god over it i assure you the prayer of faith will heal the sick hallelujah and i want to let you know that it has nothing to do with the explanation of medicine right now he that healed your body is gonna raise it up he says and the lord shall raise him up and what is more if he has committed any sin the bible says it shall be forgiven him what a powerful blessing somebody is about to receive right now. In case it is an STD that you have been trying to treat, you got it through sexual immorality. Do you know the prayer of faith covers that one too? It is a sin that you committed, stinking dirty, but God is going to wash and cleanse you. All you need to do right now is to believe and say, Lord, the prayer of faith, as you have said, heals me and I receive it. I want to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Go, to, go ahead and say, Lord, I thank you for this hour of prayer. Thank you for the provision of prayer of faith among other kinds of prayer. Lord, I thank you and I give you praise. Thank you because you have decided to release upon me and i receive it right now in the name of jesus hallelujah now you're gonna take that oil if you have any oil around you or pick the water whatever it is that you have around you as a point of contact i'm gonna pray over it then you apply it on yourself and in case you you have some terminal disease i'm talking about blood diseases heart disease kidney liver whatever it is he that made you and created you said i will raise you up right now make sure you are having having any point of contact as i pray right now in the name of jesus heavenly father Thank you for your word that never fails. Thank you, Abba Father, for every of your children right now under the pain of sin and sickness. Thank you for the healing that is available in your word. Lord, I speak to whatever be the point of contact they have right now. And I begin to pray even those who cannot lay hold on any point of contact. There is no distance in the realm of the spirit as your word is going forth. It's going to locate their bodies right now. I pray a simple prayer of faith upon anyone whatever be the condition or the situation in their body. Father, let your healing flow. There is a Balm in Gilead, Jesus of Nazareth, he heals and he sets free. Let there be healing. Thank you, Jesus. Atriates, whatever it is, inherited diseases, blood diseases, Lord, menstrual pains, oh, menopause, the, the, the disorders, whatever it is, even mental circumstances and situations. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now. Child of God, begin to do what you could not do before. The healing of God is flowing right now. Anywhere you are, begin to receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for restoration. Thank you for the healing, oh Lord, right now. In the name of Jesus, a broken bone is healed. You will discover in the next few days, somebody hearing me, you have a broken bone, not just a fraction, broken. The healing of the Lord will locate to somebody that have a waist pain the healing of the lord is locating you you have been rubbing a particular ointment on it but you will discover that it is gone and gone forever father thank you for the healings blessed be your holy name in the name of jesus i want to hear the testimonies of this specifically i want to hear the testimonies because i see the lord is releasing healings right now father we give you praise blessed be your holy name in the name of Jesus, if you have that anointing oil, you can apply it on yourself right now. If you have the water, you can sprinkle it all over you. You can drink it, do whatever. But let it be the thing that will touch your body as a point of contact. And if you don't have any point of contact, lay your hands upon yourself and claim the healing right now. In the name of Jesus, remember, it's a prayer of faith. You need to believe it and say, Lord, it has been declared. I believe it. 
and so shall it be. I remember the man that has his son, his only son, sick. And he was saying, Jesus, come and heal my baby. Jesus, come and heal my baby. Jesus told him, ah, go home. Go home, your son is healed. The Bible said the man believed. And he started going home. It was a long trek. It took him the following day to get to the house. But by the time he got there, he saw his son healed. They asked them the time. He to they told him by this time yesterday he was healed. And that was the same hour. The same hour. I mean the same hour that Jesus spoke to him. And I want to let you know this same hour. The word of God has been spoken and released over you. And right now the process of your healing has started. Some people are going to have instant healing. Some of them is going to be a process of restoration. Because of the way sometimes I've taken so many times. Years I've gone and you are and now recuperating the body will readjust itself and bounce back to health. That is your portion in the name of Jesus. Rejoice and give God praise in Jesus name. We are going to continue tomorrow or rather this evening. I'll be here again in the platform of the restored woman. We we'll continue in this prayer. We are trusting God. We're going to wrap up all these kinds of prayer. And then we position ourselves for what God has for us. Remember our intention is this for us to understand different kinds of prayer to handle different kinds of situations so that you don't pray a mess anymore so that you know what to address want to address we have had, we have already handled some brutal kinds of prayers you don't want to miss and the ones that are remaining are fireful don't miss any one of them the lord bless you the lord keep you these remaining days whatever that is belonging to you in this year that have not been released to you they are commanded to flow to you in the name of jesus somebody you see is gonna receive a testimony before the year comes to an end go ahead and thank the lord for what he has done it's a good day it's a beautiful day it's a day the lord has made will rejoice and be glad in it. We come against forces of wickedness. We come against the spirits of accident. We come against the spirit of, of, of evil wickedness. Spells released from the covens of hell. From the covens of witchcraft marine kingdoms. We come against your agenda. By the authority in the name of Jesus. We bind the forces of wickedness. We declare today we are not permitting the oppressions of darkness. We release the blessings upon the people whatever you are doing you go to your business you go to your work some people are on you know they they, they are on break so some of them are in the houses the bible the blessing of the lord will locate you and the goodness of the lord will shine upon you have a beautiful day in the mighty name of jesus amen hallelujah thank you jesus